What's going on everybody? So today I'm doing a morning video because I won't have time today to do a video and I just don't want to wait until this evening uh, to do it because I tried to do that yesterday and it just didn't happen between work and uh, some after school stuff for Skylar, some activities and just got away from me. So I'm trying to have a steady schedule with this channel. So as I do lately, when I want to do a morning video, I come to my, my favorite place, uh, and that is the Arker Butler Lake. Um, I, at the, I am at the Pleasant Hill Boat Launch in Hernando, Mississippi. This is a really big lake that has several uh, boat launches all around it, uh, and this is the one closest to me. And it's nice because it's probably a 10 minute drive and I drop Skylar off from school and I drive out here and it just gives me a minute to clear my head and, and think about stuff coming up later in the day and meetings and all that stuff. So um, so I'm, I'm going to talk about what it's like living near my mother now. So I don't want to rehash uh, all the stories. You know, I know 95% of you know my mom and, and know the move from Maine to Mississippi. Uh, but some of you don't. So my mother is Darlene Mishu. She has her own channel. Go check it out. Just uh, look at the spelling of my last name and then replace the first name with Darlene and you'll find her um, her channel. Uh, but for context on some of the things I'm going to be referencing, I did three videos in the past and go check them out. Number 33, 44, and 45. 33 talks about the move that I did, helped move my mother and grandmother, my 98 year old grandmother, by the way, from Maine to Mississippi um, in uh, November. Well, we flew out of Maine on October 31st uh, and, and that whole thing. So you can listen to that story. Uh, my mother had a lot of issues with her furniture moving. I did a video on that. That's episode 44. Um, and then on episode or video 45, uh, I talk about, you know, my mom moving out and uh and the story of how she stayed with me for a, th a good month her and my grandmother stayed in my little two-bedroom apartment and my living room turned into a hospice care unit so go look at those videos for like the full context and stories behind all this but so now what i want to talk about is the two months now that my mother has lived a thousand feet from me uh so she i think she moved out into her place let's say December, first is December. I can't remember the exact day. And we're nearing the end of January. So we're looking at two months. Now for context, I moved to Nashville in 2005, in October of 2005. So this October is gonna be 17 years that I moved away, a thousand miles from all family. Um, and was good with it. Uh, you know, I was definitely that family member that was just like, all right, love y'all, but um, I've hit a crossroads in my life and it's terrifying to me to move, but I got to do this and whoosh, move to Nashville and, you know, so much has happened since then. So um, good things, bad things, but yeah, I changed my life and whoop, went on a different journey and got very used to living a thousand miles from my mom, right? Um and I don't think that's a bad thing to say. I think people can relate that you love your parents, but sometimes it's good to have some distance so you can have your, yourself, right? Well, I had a lot of myself, a thousand miles away. Got, I'm a fairly private person still now, but very private, you know, years ago before I started my business podcast and this channel, you know, of becoming, I'm getting more out of my shell because of this stuff. But overall, private person, quiet, love my space. So when it was decided, you know, when my mom was moving down, it was, it was like, oh boy, okay, this is going to change things. So obviously that first month was stressful and I can't count that as a sample size of what it's like living near my mom, because first off the, the actual transporting my 98 year old grandmother from Maine was terrifying again check out the old video on that and then they live with me for a month stressful my living room is a hospice care unit it was just high high stress my mom stressed 
because of the move and furniture stuff and she's stressed stressed because of her caretaking of her mom and then that, that's a tense relationship and then now i'm around it and you know it was it was tense you know but i can't i can't judge what it's been like over that it's like an asterisk right it's an outlier well now my mom has her own apartment in the same complex as me thousand feet away so i joke she went from a thousand miles to a thousand feet <laughs> So now two months later, I have to tell you that it's so much better than I ever expected. You know, uh, sorry if I was making you guys anticipate on what I was going to say, whether it was bad or good. It's been great. How about that? So what I've noticed is um, now that my mom's getting settled in, and I, I, I don't know if she's ever going to totally be comfortable, but now that the move is over with, She's still dealing with, you know, trying to dispute some charges and some things with the moving companies. And there's still a little bit of leftover mess from the move, but she's settled in. She's got her workstations in her apartment. It's good to go. And, uh, she, and I can tell that she seems a little more, at least to me, calm and happy. Uh, so that's good. But what's happening is I feel like I'm actually having a fairly normal relationship with my mom. I know that might sound weird. And I know you're watching this, mom. But I feel like you can understand what I'm saying here. And how I, how I gather that is for the last 17 years, well, 16 plus years, I would either go to Maine for a week pretty much every year, but there was chunks of time where I didn't. And in that week, it was highly concentrated and my time with my mom was also time with my grandmother. And what happens there is um, there's a lot of negative, tense energy in that relationship. And I know a lot of you know this. And this is ingrained in me since the childhood, my childhood, being a child. So when I am in the same room or same house with my mom and grandmother, it's, it's anxious. It's anxious time for me. Um, so going home was never like, okay, it's good to see people. And, but I couldn't wait to leave quite honestly. It was like, all right, I'm ready to go home, <laughs> home, meaning Nashville or Memphis or wherever I was living at the time. Or my mom would come visit me in Schuyler and stay with me. And that was better, but my mom was, would still be exhausted from the move and, uh, or not the move, but from the travel, be, uh, anxious because at there were periods back just even a couple years ago where a few years ago where my grandmother could be kind of left unattended and my mom's sister would kind of help and my mom would be able to kind of get away a little bit but it was concentrated and there was always still that that energy with my mom that was down she was anxious made me anxious uh but you know it was, it was what it was and that became my normal. That just became our normal. I mean, 17 years is a long time. <laughs> well, now she lives a thousand feet from me, right? And I was nervous about that. And, and I felt like my worlds were colliding a little bit. Uh, and I know my mom knows that. But now I'm experiencing just a casual relationship because my mom can come over Right now she's doing laundry because her washer and dryer were, were busted in the move. And anyone that watched that video knows what I'm talking about. Um, so she'll pop in and visit. She'll bring food, soup. You know, uh, Skylar will, and her friend AG will make cupcakes and cake and bring food to, for my grandmother. So it's like this, like, oh, wow, like a real family. Like we're here to just visit and help each other and and it, it's less concentrated so it's more casual so I get to see my mom more and I'm going to get to now what I love about Skylar and my mom now how that's changed but for me I get to see my mom more on a much more casual basis you know we see each other almost every day or every other day um 
and it's less tense because my mom's more chill. And I don't know, mom, how you really feel, but you definitely act more chill when you come over. Um, when I go to your house or when I go to my mother's house, yes, I deal with that ingrained energy in me and I get anxious around my mother and grandmother. But you know what? I get to leave. I go visit. I hang out. I'm patient. Everything's cool. I, you know, I just try to be patient, but then I know I get to go home. <laughs> um, so that's been nice. I like going over there and seeing my mom's workstations and seeing how she's finding her place in there and engaged back in her business because this move was a huge interruption for her. And it's not just the day we moved. It was the months leading up to the move of her decluttering her house. Now, that's not just a physical task. It's that for my mom. But it was also an insane emotional and mental task for my mom to, to fight through all that. And my mom has talked about that in length on her channel. So, so it's just nice to finally have all of that behind us and be in this, for what I feel, a pretty damn comfortable situation. Now, when it comes to her and Skylar, so for every summer since she was in diapers, she would go to Maine, except for 2020 because of COVID. But she would spend three, four, sometimes five weeks in Maine during the summer. And we would transport her in different ways. My mom would come get her, take her back. And then I'd fly to Maine, do my visit, and then fly Scholar back. And it changed year to year. But so my mother and daughter have a strong relationship. So that's awesome. So even though we we're a thousand miles apart, they were able to spend a lot of time together. But really, it still was concentrated. So my mom felt like she had to entertain and do as many things with her granddaughter in four weeks as possible which would exhaust her and it was also awesome but it was concentrated and in order for my daughter to have that experience she had to go visit her grandmother a thousand miles away from home and not see her mom or dad which she got comfortable with and was and, and fit into that and she was good with that but still it's a, it was a lot to do in order for them to spend time together so now my mom lives here. And what was interesting is, you know, my daughter is now 13 and she's not that nine year old, like, Meme, that's how we call my mom. And I call my grandmother Meme, so Skylar calls her grandmother Meme. And it was just always, Meme, let's do this, Meme, let's do that, Meme, 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 you know? Now she's a teenager and all mysterious. So at the front end, Skylar, and not deliberately and not in a hateful way, wasn't just, wasn't jumping at, hey, Mimi, let's do this. Hey, Mimi, let's do that. And my mom was a little bummed by that, but she knew Skylar was getting older, so she could already tell because Skylar wasn't texting her as much and on the phone as much. And I have to remind her, she's a teenager. You know, I didn't want to hang out with my grandparents when I was a teenager either, you know. Um, but over time... I think whether Skylar realizes it or not, she got used to seeing her meme on a regular basis now. And the offer and the opportunity was always there for her to go to her grandmother's house and work with her. As you all know, my mom owns a little fabric business and does YouTube and does all this stuff on eBay and Patreon. And Skylar used to help her with her fabric when she'd be in Maine. Uh, and my mom fully intended on having Skylar work with her now. It was part of the, the bonus of moving here is to be closer to her granddaughter to do these things. But it didn't happen immediately. Uh, but now all of a sudden, I can't remember. It's hard to pinpoint the exact moment. But now Skylar is like wanting to go over there and wants to work for with her grandmother and she gets paid so my mom's treating it like a little job to the point where now her my mom took Skylar to the bank and they opened up a savings account a joint savings account with me my name on it uh, my mom will just pop over and take Skylar for a ride to the post office uh, and then so they get to spend quality time with each other in these little spurts peppered through the week and every week so it's going to be more consistent rather than having to force it in a certain chunk of time 
and fly her a thousand miles to Maine in order for it to happen. So that's become casual. So, and like she lives a thousand feet from me now. So Scott was like, Dad, I'm gonna walk to MMAs for a couple hours. Okay. And then she goes, has fun, spends time with her grandmother. They're working together. My mom loves it. Now she feels like, oh, all right, now I'm spending time with my granddaughter. And um, this is all from my perspective. This is how I see it. So, mom, as you watch this, you know, this is how I see it. And, and I see it as very cool. And I'll, I think, I know I've joked once. I may have even joked with my mom twice about this, but she'll be at the apartment and I'm like, mom, like, I'm starting to feel like family. <laughs> and I laugh and I know my mom's laughing because honestly, our family as a whole is not close knit. There's a lot of just my mom and her siblings all have, we'll say dynamic relationships, complicated relationships. Uh, and I've been, you know, I didn't grow up with any siblings. I had cousins growing up, which I love, you know, and thank God for them as a child. I, I wouldn't have, there's so much that I wouldn't have experienced without them and my aunt Dolly and my uncle Ronnie, their parents going camping and, and all the stuff I did with them. I'm so grateful and blessed for all that. But, you know, none of us really hang out anymore. We're not getting on the phone and calling each other. When I do go to Maine, I make sure to try to visit them as much as possible, especially my cousin Ronnie, because we grew up four months apart in age, so we were obviously closer. But it goes back to why I was able to move. I, it was scary to not know, you know, for the unknown ahead of me as far as the move was concerned. But in no way did I feel weird leaving home. I never got homesick to this day. I've never been homesick. Um, and that's not trying to insult anyone. It's just is what it is, you know. Um, and now we'll see how often I go back to Maine now that my mom doesn't live there. So that's going to change things too. It might be a while before I go back. Um, but if I do go back, it's because I want to take Skylar to go see her cousins. And that would be the main reason. But so all in all, it's, it's working out and I can't speak for my mom. She is still a caretaker for her 98 year old mother. Who's going to be 99 in March. And there's a complicated relationship there. So I know my mom is still stressed out with that. And I'm going to end it with this because I'm optimistic with the future now after this move. And this is going to sound weird. No one wants to see a loved one pass away, right? But I see a lot of comments from you when I talk about my family about being a caretaker and how hard it is and how difficult it is, how stressful it is. And then you have a difficult relationship on top of all that. So no one wants to see a family member go, but 99 years is a good run, okay? <laughs> it's a good run. And I foresee that when that day comes, because that's pretty much more, that's more guaranteed than taxes. It's going to happen. Um, wow. The liberation that's going to happen for my mom is going to be, is going to be cool. Then now she can hang out and we, and leave the house for more than 20 minutes at a time for her to be able to get out of the house and go to the post office, maybe go to Walmart, go to the pharmacy, whatever, just do some quick errands, bounce around town a little bit, bang, bang, boom. Then she's going to be back. And that might be the only time she gets out of the house for the whole day. Or she'll take a little walk to my apartment or she'll go check her mail. So again, going back to how cool and casual it can be. So she can just pop in for five minutes, say hello. Can't do that a thousand miles away. But when that day comes and that responsibility is gone, then wow, it's going to be very interesting to see, to be able to do things together and her and Skylar do things together and go for a drive, take my mom to Nashville, all kinds of different things we can do. So, so I am very optimistic about this move. I, I like it so far, so far. So 
Um, anyways, as always, thanks for watching. If you want to support this channel, check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. I'm going to also include the links for the videos that I just referenced or in the beginning of this video in the description area. Check out my Facebook group. It's the same name as my channel, my first and last name, Derek Mishu. Or as my mother says, Darlene Michaud. That's a whole other story. We, we don't pronounce our last name the same way, which is hilarious, but... I should do a whole video on that, but, um, that's it. Um, also as you guys keep track of me, uh, maybe if you watch these in, in, in order, uh, the real Hernando launch went amazing. And I'm going to give you all more information on that as the, as the next week, uh, unfolds. So have a great day and we'll talk to you again soon.